Welcome to Mrs. Lee's Chemistry Academy, where no students are left behind. Today, we're going to talk about gravimetric analysis, a very important technique in the reactions unit. This is tied to the learning objective from College Board 1.19, where the student can design and or interpret data from an experiment that uses gravimetric analysis to determine the concentration of an analyte in a solution. So what is gravimetric analysis? It is adding a substance to a solution to react specifically with a dissolved analyte to form a precipitate. And then the precipitate form will be isolated by filtration, purified by being washed with more water, dried in the oven, and remasked at the end. And from the mass of the precipitate collect, we can then calculate backward using stoichiometric mole ratios to find the mass of the analyte in the original mixture. The calculation involves 1. Converting the mass of precipitate into moles of precipitate by dividing it by the molar mass. Then, using the stoichiometric mole ratio to convert the moles of precipitate to the moles of analyte. We use the coefficient from the balanced equation. Then we convert the moles of analyte to mass of analyte by using its molar mass. And finally, we calculate the analyte present in a mixture sample. Practice question number one. A student is given 3.12 grams of a mixture containing anhydrous calcium chloride and sodium nitrate. Design a procedure so that we can isolate the calcium chloride and find the mass percent. So first, we dissolve the mixture in a small amount of water in a beaker. Then we add excess silver nitrate to precipitate out all the chloride ion to form silver chloride precipitate. This silver chloride precipitate will then be filtered and be washed. And then we finally dry it in the oven and then we remass it. So here I like to draw the diagram uh, of what's happening. Here is your beaker. So I would have dissolved in the water uh, the calcium chloride and the sodium nitrate because they are soluble in water. Now they form movable ions. So to that I add excess silver nitrate solution. Now that's going to form a precipitate which is the silver chloride on the bottom of the beaker. And now I still have these ions floating around being calcium ion, sodium ion, and nitrate ions. Now I take this beaker and filter on a pre-masked filter paper through a funnel to collect the silver chloride precipitate and of course I still have the other ions in the filtrate. Now then the silver chloride can be uh, dried in the oven on that filter paper and then we will mass it at the end. But before you do that, make sure you add washing so that no impurities is trapped in the silver chloride precipitate. So here is uh, the calculation necessary. First we write a balanced equation. So we write um, silver nitrate, aqueous solution, added to calcium chloride, aqueous solution in the water to form the precipitate silver chloride. And then we get the spectator ions, sodium, sorry, calcium nitrate in the solution floating around. And we need to balance it by putting a 2 here and a 2 here. Now, for the calculation, let's say we collect 4.25 grams of silver chloride. So we take the 4.25 grams silver chloride. First, we convert it into moles of silver chloride. So we take the molar mass of silver chloride, which is 143.32 grams. Now then we relate it to the mole ratio from the balanced equation. Uh, as you know, 2 moles of silver chloride 
comes from one mole of calcium chloride. Now we get the moles of calcium chloride and we convert it into grams of calcium chloride, which has the molar mass of 110.98 grams. And this amount is calculated as 1.65 grams of calcium chloride. Now we're going to calculate the mass percent by taking the 1.65 grams of calcium chloride over the original mixture, which is 3.12 grams as given by the problem earlier. And that would yield 52.7% of calcium chloride in the mixture. So here's a recap of my earlier work for you to follow. You may want to pause the screen here and so that you can thoroughly understand the work and maybe jot down some notes for yourself. Practice question number two. I have a copper silver alloy and I want to determine the amount of silver in the alloy. So the first thing is to dissolve the alloy with some nitric acid in a beaker and let's say I have 0.5994 grams of the alloy. Now after the reaction is complete then I add sodium chloride solution to the content to form silver chloride precipitate. The silver chloride precipitate will then be filtered, washed, dried and masked until I get a constant mass. So let's say this represents the data that I collect. First I have the silver alloy being 0.5994 grams, and then I find an empty dry filter crucible, 30.4507 gram, and after I collect the precipitate silver chloride uh, in it, I will then um, do it uh, do the massing, drying, filtering three times until I get the constant massing at the end, which is 31.1938 grams. So how do we calculate? The calculation involves, first, uh, we need to write a balanced equation of sodium chloride solution added to the uh, silver nitrate solution to form uh, silver chloride precipitate and sodium nitrate. Solution. Now this silver nitrate that we got from here comes from the silver ion from the alloy being extracted by the nitric acid and the sodium chloride is a solution to add to it to precipitate out its silver chloride. So the mass of the mass of silver chloride is equal to uh, the final massing 31.19 Three eight grams minus that of the um, empty crucible, and you get 0 0.7431 grams of silver chloride. Now then we take this 0 0.7431 gram of silver chloride, and we convert it into moles of silver chloride by dividing it by the molar mass of 143.32 grams. Then we relate the moles of silver chloride to the moles of silver because in one mole of silver chloride you get one mole of silver. Now we convert it into grams of silver by multiplying by the molar mass of 107.87 grams and we obtain 0 0.5593 grams of silver. So. Um, here is a recap of my earlier work. First, you write a balanced equation. Then, you uh, obtain the mass of silver chloride. And then, you convert it into the grams of silver. And finally, you then divide the mass of silver by the mass of alloy, the 0.5593 grams by 0.5994 grams to convert it into 93.31% uh, of silver in the alloy. So this alloy contains quite a very high percentage of silver. Question number three deals with sequential precipitation. Here I have a solution containing three kinds of ions in it, barium, copper, and lead. 
design a procedure to isolate the ions one at a time, and then write net ionic equation for the formation of each precipitate. So here is uh, a diagram of the three kinds of ions in my beaker. I have the copper ion, I have the lead ion, and I have the barium ion. So to that, I first add potassium chloride solution because that would precipitate out the uh, lead chloride. And so then I still have my copper and lead ions floating around. Then uh, I'm going to filter uh, to collect the lead chloride on the filter paper. And then, of course, I still have this copper ion and lead ions in the beaker in the filtrate. And then to that, I'm going to add, sorry, I don't have the lead ion. I do have the barium ion. I do have the barium ion. So uh, let me take it out. Good. Let me take this out, and I have the bare in my on here. Okay, now I'm going to add the potassium sulfate solution to it, and that should form on the bottom of the beaker uh, the barium sulfate precipitate, and then I still have the copper ions floating around, and of course then I'm going to filter uh, through the funnel to get my barium sulfate isolated. And in the filtrate, I still have the copper ions floating around. Now here, you can decide to do nothing, or you say, I want to precipitate out. So you're going to add sodium hydroxide. Now that would then form the precipitate of copper hydroxide on the bottom of the beaker. And then you can filter to collect this um, copper hydroxide precipitate. So now I have successfully isolated the three ions sequentially. Okay, so if we want to write the, the net ion equation, first we would have the lead ion uh, combined with the chloride ion to make lead chloride precipitate. And then I would have the barium ion when I write my net ion equation, and the sulfate ions combining to form the precipitate barium sulfate. And then finally, I have my um, copper ion and the hydroxide ions to form copper 2 hydroxide precipitate. All right, now here is a recap of my earlier work for you to follow. Formation of lead chloride first, then formation of barium sulfate, and then formation of copper hydroxide. The important thing is that you select uh, something to add to the solution so that it does not interfere with the other ions, but only forming the precipitate with the ion of interest. So you need to go back to your solubility rules and look at it and pick out the correct kind of reactant. So here is a summary of what we have learned today. We learned what is gravimetric analysis, a very important procedure in uh, isolating the ion of interest. And two, how we designed an experiment to precipitate the ion of interest. And finally, how do we calculate the mass percent of an analyte in a mixture by its stoichiometry. I hope that you have found the above lesson useful to you. I look forward to hearing comments from you, and I hope to see you again next time.